All right, let's see how this goes, okay? Let me just... I wanted to talk about how quantum dots could be turned into a transistor-like style of computation using some of my ideas and theories and concepts for uh, really what it's... Well, for what it's worth, it's like there's other people that have already done some of this. So, like, I'm really just puzzle-piecing their shit together, but just in a... Anyways, moving on. Um, so, quantum dots, interesting technology. They elicit light when given electricity and or uh, they give, give you electricity for light. They're like a photodiode, a solar photovoltaic, right? Now, they're really kind of weird in the sense that they uh, are extraordinarily efficient, but also they're almost shit in terms of all the other ways that they are <laughs> and exist as. Like, they're really easily broken down, right? But, like, okay, so, if you know anything about how that we have to put these together, then you know that, like, there are ways that we, of course, we put them in TVs that allow for us to still not really have that kind of issue as much-ish, right? Like, you know, that kind of thing. Like, a lot of your cell phones have lights that are, are using quantum dot technology, right? Okay, but, like... This one has to be better than just that. Like, you can't just, like, put some light in there and, and, and all of a sudden, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, and phototransistors are nice and everything, but they're not really that amazing for what it's worth, right? So, uh, which they are, but they aren't. It's a whole thing. You're going to have to, like, kind of, like, take it for a grain of salt when I say that because like generally speaking they're some of the better computational methods we have but they're also some of the worst as well they're they're early stage stuff so uh, let's get into how this design kind of works there's no magic thing I might edit it I might edit this but uh, so carbon onion balls are pretty interesting right but they're kind of unbelievably shitty, <laughs> for what it's worth, right? Like, they, they are really easy to make, and for certain applications, they're incredibly fun and, and good to use. However, they are also incredibly shitty, because uh, I can't put anything in the center of them, but they're way easier, more or less, to make than most other versions of uh, fullerene or hadronic or whatever fullerene style thing that they are, right? It's like, those are super rare and blah, blah, blah. I don't really care that much. What I care about is it's like, all right, so I can use this, but in a different way, okay? So if I happen to put a quantum dot in a given substrate, that'd be interesting, but it wouldn't really work and it kind of sucks, right? But if I happen to use, instead of a carbon onion ball, a style of mushing these fuckers somewhat into an area, which they're easy-ish to make. However, they're not tremendously difficult, okay? So, to break and turn into something that sucks, right? Uh, and I'm kind of beating around the bush, mostly because it's like I've sort of, so give me a second. So the carbon onion balls are not going into a substrate. In fact, we're not doing much of anything with carbon onion balls, right? We're actually technically not using that. What we're using is a specific type of graphene, all right, that is not diamond-like carbon in any aspect. In fact, this will be a little bit more of a curved, smushed graphite. So we put that into a substrate, okay? When we do that, we then use a solvent that activates off of photolithography to carve some of the insides out of the graphite, okay? Then we're gonna squish a nice little, uh, what is it called, the quantum dot, right? And then we're gonna put two of these substrates and sandwich them over top of each other. Then we're going to uh, photolithography their ass to hell. So we're carving around them over time and creating a carbon fullerene onion ball style thing that we're then going to uh, carve a small spot and attach a silicon carbide-like 
substance. It is silicon carbide, but uh, some of it is not because I need to add in a type of silicon dioxide that makes a fiber optic interconnect here for these carbon onion balls that then allow for it to have a placed on uh, style of carbon that wants to graphite. So what we're talking about is almost like an atomic deposition, except it's not really quite like that. So carbon will form around the ball if it's already kind of carved and gets placed around it pretty easily in these little, you know, kind of substrate clamp sandwich way thing. I don't really care what they call them. Uh, they never really matter to me. Uh, it's a sandwich by any other name, you know what I mean? It's just the thing that holds it and then and you press it over and then wouldn't you know it, it deposits it and it's just like those old fucking tattoos. You know, those temporary ones, and, 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 and a little washy and, then, and wouldn't you know it, but you have to put some electricity through it. And so it creates a twisted graphene structure on the outside of a carbon fullerene onion quantum dot ball thing now that we now have, of course, along with a interconnect of fiber optics that are, of course, there because that's easier to do when they're already in the substrate and then you can activate it with light and some electricity in that given area, thus welding it, making it much easier and simpler to design these things in this manner. And then I can build them the right way to uh, depending on how I put in either as a electromagnetic field or a static charge dump as in I build it and then want it to go over or I have a direct connection that goes to it that allows for a multiple 360 degree sphere gate array that I can use okay now the reason why I want that is because I have to build and design a bunch of power delivery uh, sandwich substrates, but they're not standard. These are going to be very, very hard. And once I build some of these things, I have to very particularly place them in an already built for this design thing and then squish it really hard, like a diamond anvil here, and then run the right amount of heat and electricity through them, which causes them, of course, to bind and become uh, much much more usable, right? But the difference here is that there's decided gaps intentionally there, not just for that to fit with these uh, new uh, transistor-style quantum dots, but also so that way I can have not just the fiber optic interconnects, which, by the way, I didn't get finished with those fiber optic interconnects, so I have to add in a bismuth uh, silicon, um, I believe it was freaking copper as well that has to be in there that works very with calcium and magnesium. So like both of these make them, when I press them in, uh, electrically conductive and they reflect basically all the light that we're going to use for these quantum dots anyway, so I don't really care that much which that allows for me to make electrically conductive silicon, well not silicon, but uh, fiber optics, right? Which is a good thing, because that allows for me to push in both electricity, but also modulate like how the light gets moved and using inductive forces, this is where the, there's these little gaps here, I'm trying to cause it to vibrate. So I'm using acoustic resonance styles of cooling, but I'm actually not trying to do it in the standard way. So what that means is I get it to be very cold somewhat in this area and I'm creating a like it could be incredibly disorganized and chaotic state that doesn't exist yet. It's a virtual state, right? Now what that means is, is because it's very compressed and incredibly hard to move to begin with, I already have a lot of electricity that's there, and I'm able to cool it with a standard cooler, and then I use a field and electrically conductive fiber optic pin set, direct connection, and then fields of you know tiny little electromagnetic coils in between that allow for me to put the chip onto a standard motherboard, right? So that way you can feed in both light but it can also feed in electricity and electromagnetic fields. All of this means that I can cause it to vibrate very specifically. And oh, by the way, that, that little sandwich thing, that's a denoise. So like I'm trying to make that be like a Faraday cage that's active and passively denoising anything in the area along with, you know, nice little CPU 
power cooler thing, you know, like a standard CPU cooler, basically. But like, you know, if I use acoustic resonance, it becomes far, far more efficient at leaving heat, you know, into it, which is great. That's what I want. There, here's a little niggly wiggly detail caveat stuffs. All right, so the reason why I'm doing this is because this is my version of how to make a superpositional qubit state that then collapses into a more ordered, less disorganized, you know, less chaotic state, which is a good thing. But I'm using field potential, which is sort of a way to, to talk about this. So I put this on my YouTube channel earlier. But, all right, what that means is I'm setting up possible potentials that as I fire in electricity and light, that then creates kind of like a Newton's cradle drop. So think it's kind of almost there, but then this energy, of course, dumps itself as the field that gets elicited as an inductive force, but then also the electricity and the light that's there and to becoming ordered and being known. But of course, it has to go back But every single state that is there, of course, error corrects by effectively not allowing for something to go through and being detected in several ways. Then it has to go through the same pin as it gets that electricity and light dumped in along with fields to allow for it to cancel out a lot of ways the, the noise that's there. So I lose a lot of electricity by setting up that initial state, but those are kind of like you know, quantum memory moments, effectively, that then are going to have other real memory. So these are, you know, virtual memory that then collapse into a disorganized hot state that only needs to exist, which isn't really hot. It's, you know, it's, anyways, point is that allows for it to go through the right way, collapse, and then basically head back the same way. But the only reason why it does that is because we're technically acting, trying to force it to act like it has a tunnel moment, but it doesn't have a tunnel moment. There's nothing there going on for any energy band gaps, okay, which is okay, right? We're not looking for that. We're looking for a tunnel like, which allows for us to, as it gets sent back, cancel out the majority of the heat in that pin which makes it so it's less noised and yeah while it took a lot of energy initially to do that that's fine i'm okay with that that's perfect for me because that means i error correct on the way out by using that denoised you know or noisy state to become a superpositional like manner error correction right so like as it goes through it's already trying to error correct off of that by what's the way to put that because it's like most people wouldn't know what an error correction is right like they use like this idea of like multiple little ones you know all together as a chunk of qubits that then make it so that way you get an error correction but like the only error correction that would be that is like effectively forming the very thing in its in its state to begin with which can only form if it's error corrected to be there then as it goes through, it gets another error correction because it can only go through that, you know, and be known as to what it is if it's the correct thing. And then going back, it can only go back by basically being the right thing in the first place. So all of these different methods mean that it's like, oh, I got three error corrections, sure, but I didn't just get three error corrections. Every step of the way, it meant no matter what, it couldn't effectively be anything other than the correct result, right? But that tends to mean that I'm doing a slightly different version here of power delivery and light delivery, and that uh, tends to irk people, right? So like, I need to be super cold. And it's like, well, technically it is. It's a super denoised, highly contained, highly compressed, incredibly, but it only just barely and then it collapses but that's the acoustic resonance and using electromagnetic fields and so on along with well and so on is is light okay so light gets moved in between each one of these and through it that cools it and then the acoustic resonance means it gets incredibly ordered but then actually just slightly not enough to be a qubit state and in that moment I can force it into a disorganized chaotic state that then collapses into the qubit just long enough for us to 
get the detection as the superposition collapse on out and back. You get the picture. So as a result, it's actually the opposite of what you would think in terms of how to use a regular superpositional qubit computer. I don't want it to be very hot. I actually need it to be a little bit warmer because I only want it to be, for very brief moments here, to be a qubit. And that's perfect because that means I get clock cycles and then those are our interconnects in between and also for the pen sets to receive the information which removes all the ideas of like basically how to um, I guess say that it can't be done at room temperature for some reason and that it's never gonna happen and we can't get it done quickly by a lot of people that you know generally speaking I agree with because if I hadn't really been been like trying my ass off to basically fix some of those issues so it seems like nobody wants to fucking work on it you know what I mean like then then we wouldn't be here you know what I mean like it's a, it's a problem it's a you know it's a puzzle that I want to solve so it's like well might as well try here's my fucking hat in the ring here you go here's how to make it here's how to do it here's how to do all the things right basic stuff but it's like hey you know these are little tiny tiny little fucking fullerene you know kind of almost things and it's like yeah no 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 but uh Almost. Okay, so here's how to use light that's a little bit different. All right, so if you know anything about me, I go into light wave interference has not been used enough, especially with electromagnetic fields in an area that control a large percentage of how it is light propagates through any given both material but also reflectivity index back into itself. So if I have a coil in a given area of this substrate while I fire it in, and it's still fairly small, but not that small, I don't need to get into x-rays or ultraviolets or whatever, I only need to make it so that way it reflects the right way and interferes the right way to basically collapse it down and focus its length into a very tight, tight little beam and pulse that I can modulate and make consistent and pulse when I want to, and angle index it based upon light wave interference and of course the tube TV photon gun technology of yesteryears for the better you know old TV technology still works I don't care what people think it still works I don't care it doesn't matter if like no I need the best fucking greatest laser no I don't I don't I don't want that that's super expensive that's super hard to do it's, it makes it impossible to make it for for everybody like this should be ubiquitous everywhere right that's what that is so instead, it's like, man, instead of that fucking bullshit, I'll just use this. And it's, it's basically just a you know nice little way to do it without needing to worry about garbage fuckfest, you know, x-ray and ultraviolet shit that is so difficult to get. Let alone, I have to vaporize a tin, you know, fucking... Add a, you know, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to do that. That's, that's annoying and hard to do. I'm not doing that. So instead, it's, this is more like microwave stuff more than anything that gets reflected back the right way that creates very tightly grouped styles of uh, destructive interference from a gamma wave that then goes off into the right collective you know style of a uh, uh, photon liquid light is what that is apparently because I'm creating a reflectivity index that's a, another smaller miniature style uh, and amplification style uh, laser liquid light that it can also create a nice little spin, so like a nice little chirality moment that collapses things to the superpositional, I guess, polarization technique that some people use for that. So that allows for me to make this happen, but it's effectively in a nice little, you know, fiber optic kind of looking thing, but it's just really the right like little points and places for that to work with the right little electrochromatic, so I need to put electro electricity through that to get the you know the coils there so electrochromatic means I can get reflectivity in that area and then shift crystals to create you know the reflectivity but also some of those coils in that given area all of which is just to make sure that the tiny little fucking bastards of these quantum dots don't degrade and now the fullerene and those basically becoming a style of qubit in their own right as they get cooled but then I'm really mostly just trying to use photons as, as the qubits for what it's worth that then you know dump into and elicit the the style of uh, you know capture effectively as their solar photovoltaics as undecided with Matt Farrell has talked about 
Now, the other way of thinking about this is like, I have brand new solar photovoltaics. And it's like, yeah, yeah you know, but I, I made them hollow. You know, I made a substrate around that that's hollow that then gets filled with a liquid that increases its potential to, uh, you know, help with energy band gaps and make more electrons happen. You kind of think like a liquid, you know, acid, lead, you know, or alkaline, you know, electron redox flow style battery. But like this then like both cools it, but then protects it and then it's the right size and shape with the density and reflectivity here to corral light into being the correct light for the quantum dots that are there and then they're always cold and compressed and they can't really degrade very easily and uh, then that makes it so I have electrical interconnects that can work off of that and uh, then I use the good old acoustic resonance so if I size and shape that sure for the light but then if I use like a little bit of this you know uh, vacuum in certain spring area that allows for it to vibrate the right way with expansion. So this is kind of like a heat inner exchange. So think like, you know, that kind of whatever point is. What it means is it's a thermoacoustic Stirling engine that pumps air using convection currents uh, with a diffuser. So it's like this and then bifurcates and then it gets, you know, sent from a smaller to a larger and larger and it gets more and more saturated as I get, and then I'm trying to accelerate it and then vortex it to keep boundary layer efficiencies up as it still rubs against that and then, you know, then I have to have a plate that it attaches to but then that allows for all of that to work far more efficiently at removing heat, which is a thermal siphon effect that is also uh, a convection thermal siphon effect so like that was my version of making super cool photovoltaics that are highly efficient because those have piezoelectrics in them that I need to run with that um, and that improves the total capture of heat into electricity 90 percent roughly for piezoelectrics that's pyroelectricity but that's mechanical stress and strain which was already going to move anyways and then expansion and then like if there's an electromagnetic field so this is permanent magnets and some coils and there's already electricity in the area that creates a destruction so this is a, a breaking down of the refrigerant that's there that then recombines and it gets and loses so it goes from I have all this ion to now I have less ions and now I'm back to being the same compound I was as the refrigerant I have and then that allows for me to then reuse it still and of course slowly over enough time it will degrade but it keeps it going for longer and your stupid like battery liquid thing is solved it's good to go now I don't have to worry about that garbage breaking down the same way as quickly as it tends to do because it cools it and uses energy cooling to actually force the actual recombination as it goes back that's compression and electricity electromagnetic and ions get ripped off as a result and it forces it to turn back into the molecular compound refrigerant that's a, either acidic or basic it does depend very heavily on what it is you're trying to do with that but all that means is like a really small amount of like tiny like magnets that don't need to be very strong are able to do this. Same thing with some piezoelectrics that are in a substrate which you can make all day easily. And that's a basic diaphragmic which you, you're going to need because that's plastic polymerized for an aesthetic or basic compound anyways. Same thing for heat exchange as you would probably want that to have the nice little you know kind of like uh, how filters work. So those are kind of like electron gaps basically. But that allows for that to then get connected in those interconnects with the piezoelectrics that would be in that diaphragm to begin with, along with like that then moving through the right way to the basically force it to form back into the compound we're looking for and move it at the same time. All of which means you're probably thinking that that wouldn't be possible, it'd be very difficult and very expensive. I roll it through some rollers and I shock it the right way to make the holes real small small like under the right heat and then it contracts that's right which then turns it into behold it's incredibly cheap same thing for this fucker which is you know instead of the I need it to be super super you know compressed and all this you know for transistors this is I roll it through the right like electrochromatic and LCD like you know material that has the nice polymer kind of thing 
and that allows for a Lorenz style lensing and reflective mirror that creates constructive and destructive interferences for the correct light wave frequencies that we're looking for. It also protects it as having more light that gets filtered from that point before it gets to the quantum dots but of course I can cool both that top and as it goes down to the bottom here capturing more of that heat and then expending it out into a larger area because during that process of course I create more heat which is great and then I expend it off in a multitude of little smaller areas that can be properly layered to allow for greater and greater degrees of capture throughout the entire duration of that and even the vortex and movement of the heat sink fin arrangement there to bend and move the right way to capture that heat as it leaves as thermal convection for more piezoelectric waste heat in the atmosphere energy but then I also then turned into extra big brain dude who's like well there's humidity here <sighs> I can guarantee you there's humidity here on the outside and this is going to be hotter and it's moving faster which means there's less humidity in its view and it wants to make that charge happen and because it's statically more inclined to be positive thanks to this as well you know the movement in heat and some amount of humidity around I then make an amazing discovery of which we've already made so you know just fucking deal with it of a generator that's a waste heat generator that uses convection and hey wouldn't you know it some stuff that's already in our atmosphere of either dust or you know water so like that works out really really well to making it both cool but make even more electricity so for that heat I then potentiate it by making even more electricity so I actually look like I'm higher than 100% I look that way I'm not I'm getting extra energy from other places and sources clearly it's not the same thing but at the same time it sure looks like it could be more but that's you know the whole thing of like getting some vacuums in there and shaping it the right way to create that vortex that allows for a bit of that and then oh there's a vacuum and it wants to move back and and that gives me even more energy which is nice all of it's to say it was my version of a almost vertical style of of a solar panel that can track you know off of that you know and it makes it super efficient for what it's worth because that's acoustic cooling that's acoustic readiness cooling that you can start getting into too as that Stirling engine then helps increase the effect of that and capture as it can go under pressure kind of like a nuclear reactor so like you know more pressure before it goes to boil and more pressure back into that system as that's a higher amount of area so think big you know, like there's a ruler underneath the newspaper and you try and move it right it's like eh, it has to resist against the entire move newspaper right for the movement same thing there's a bigger area here versus a smaller solar photo and so that does more actual work energy onto it thus making it far easier to do this for atmospheric battery like styles of pressure because it's gravity pressure okay so like gravity creates you know atmosphere pressure standard but it's like we never really seem to use that until we get vacuums really going but that's effectively what a battery is you know I make a thing I store energy it's always kind of in there so long as it's always there and then atmosphere so long as uh, you know we still live on this planet exists most likely so I'm gonna keep using that <laughs> you know what I mean like that's easy shit all damn day same thing for like heat battery down here you know for like ground stuff but then yeah, that's a bit different because then I ended up going like, well, I can go a little bit further if I really want to because if I drill down, I don't have to drill down too far. I'm not looking for like real geothermal. I'm looking for a little bit of extra heat and pressure there and that allows for me to create that convection current to be even stronger and that allows for a ground state that helps improve this effect. Since I already need to dig it down, you know, into like a pole or, you know, you got a house or something, Right, then it's like, well, then that's extra heat and, you know, that's buoyancy. So think there's a lower pressure up here and, well, more like down here really more than anything. But that flows it. So, like, I start it by vacuuming it out and then I dump in that refrigerant and then that allows for that to ground and be electrically conductive. But in order to do that, I still have to do these little U things and they have to be made out of piezoelectrics with a nice little shielding for the heat and pressure that it's going to have. So it transfers it fairly well. But the point is, is like that also allows for electricity to move between the two things 
uh, but that also captures that extra heat, right? Which is great because then I can cool it off with a secondary kind of like, you know, cooler pre-stage before then like it's slightly warmed up by, you know, comparatively over here guy, you know, solar panel, like it's so hot. Oh, but it's like, no, 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 nice some piece of electrics here and you know, same thing and it bleeds off the heat. And then I might want to use that for my house if it's cold or, hey, you know, I don't even care. Just get hot over there, you know, I guess, right? But like, hey, whatever, who gives a shit? Point is, for me, it was all about like dumping it in to making more energy, you know? Same thing for like, oh, if I make a Jules Thompson Vortex lower pressure in, in like acoustic resonance style, then I can use like that same effect to dump heat into this system and basically, you know, get electricity out of it. But that also means I got an AC system that also cools that. But, you know, that means I typically want to turn it into a slightly different thing. I, I like to add in IR, but then electrostatic and electromagnetic. So as there's, of course, that that exists in our atmosphere of the house that you're in or apartment or whatever, right? That also means you can capture that. And that's not a lot, but like, it doesn't mean it's negligible. Same thing for the amount of light. If you basically turn your, your walls into light capture, and the acoustic resonance diaphragms for underneath so like drywall but then like the nice little shaping and sizing of holes and a lot of places you know but not everywhere because you still want to hang things up i'm sure but the point is it's like and i capture a large amount of that force that gets gets deposited back acoustic resonance style into this system that makes it so i can bleed that heat off right and that's a lot easier because that's piezoelectric. So I capture that and I'm already moving something around for this system that I have here. That allows for me to use acoustic resonance movement. So think as it's Bernoulli's principle, it gets smaller and tighter and contracts, but then like this is an expansion over here. And so like that's a bunch of movement of diaphragmic expansion and contraction. What that means is it creates its own pump, air pump that you now can capture the vast majority of electrostatic electromagnetic dumpage effectively into an area, but also this kinetic movement and order it and deposit it back in and it falls back. That creates convection that starts the whole effect again, right? Standard stuff, pretty easy to make truthfully for its worth because it's smaller to a larger to a larger, but then that goes backwards and it's a whole thing, it's Jules Thompson stuff. But then, you know, of course, as that's there, that allows for me to, to use those piezoelectrics and then that movement of acoustic resonance and some diaphragms on the, the tubes there that helps with that kind of pumping action, you know. And uh, all together, it's super cheap for what it's worth because you could theoretically 3D print that but and then mold it for drywall, which drywall is like not super cheap though. You know what I mean? So I tended to turn into like, what is it that you got over there? Is that some cloth? You got some cloth over there? What you got? You got some like plastic, you know, maybe like rubber that you're not, you, what you got? You got some old sex toys, bitch. What you got over there? <laughs> I'm gonna get up in there. I'm gonna try. <laughs> like, what do you got? I'm gonna get a piezo like, I'm gonna get some fucking, you know, aluminum or fucking copper or something. You know what I mean? Just like grind it. Fucking, mm, what do you got over there? <laughs> I'm gonna fucking mm, just stick it in with some, you know, silicone coking, silicone caulking, you know what I mean? Right, and then like that, that gives me my drywall. But I still have to, you know, that's a suspension thing. So that means like it's still nailed, but it's just in a different way. It's screws and the suspension and like that then connects to, so that way it's still, have, and then those are nice little interconnects with like standoff, you know, insulated areas. You know, otherwise known as cable areas, you know, that allow me to run the electricity through everything. But I'm gonna move on. Uh, I've already been going on for, for too long because like one of those designs that I was talking about that for the wall thing is more or less for like creating a room full of like a bunch of LED quantum dot stuff that absorbs a lot of your heat but also allows for you to push in sound in a multitude of all the areas around you and then have a bunch of constructive interference light wave styles that go through a bunch of little small tubes that then get reflected the right way as they're moving right and so that creates a seemingly holographic as you get like constructive interference for bell curve styles of light and you also get standard uh what are, they, what are those called again fucking i don't know if you know what this is it's called polarization 
that helps with like curvatures of constructive and destructive interference, which then allows for it to look like it's off the the, the very small AV nanometers, but like still wouldn't matter for photons. You know what I mean? So like it's it's a little bit further away from where the wall actually is. It seems to display all the light, which then makes it so it's super cool. And then you can kind of pulse them the right way as you can use that, and then you can get further and further and further out until you can start having it look like it's a real holographic hologram style room that also produces a resonant bunch of frequencies into both atmosphere, so air, but then also your body, so you really feel the impact of something, you know what I mean? You get a nice little bunch of electricity running through that for the nice little arc of uh, pulsing light towards something, and it smacks it even harder by both heating it up, but really it's just to create an arc to the person the right way to making the, uh, the old nerve angles there, it feel like you got really hit. You know what I mean? <sighs> but uh, I was like, oh, holodecks are cool. I hate them because they're basically impossible to know if you get them really good if you're in a simulation. And so you never know, and that's terrifying in a lot of ways, and I hate that. Because they can then start making you move. So like that's like an air hockey table that gives you the right idea and, and, and belief of friction, but the friction isn't really there, right? Same thing for a lot of other like, oh, if I use the right little movement of a, a static and an acoustic, then I can build something up and then break it down really fast, which allows for it to look like there's a chair and table there that's, you know, really quite good, but except not really, actually. That's terrifying. That's a, that's a pretty scary thing. But you know what it does do? It means that I can now make it so that way you can have incredibly tiny, minute things inside of a body to surgically work on by using this. If you put them in a tube, you can effectively shove this into that kind of realm of uh, really small nano-sized areas of being able to work on. That's electromagnetic, that's electrostatic, that's light, acoustic resonance stuff. That allows for you to get really tiny and accurate with how you, uh, in no way needing any more invasive styles of surgery. You can ablate away things and you can, you know, break things apart or combine them together wonderfully. And hopefully you also have some medicine in there and whatnot, you know, for some of that, possibly, maybe you got some stem cells or something, and wouldn't that be nice, because fucking hell, that would really remove the chance and possibility of certain styles of cancer from occurring, as you can just pop yourself in a tube, and sleep, and just, just fucking automatically get scanned and have it happen, because fuck it, why not, you know what I mean, <sighs> right, but that's kind of where it really was like that thing for me. You know, I was like, oh, well, then I could just do this, <sighs> right? Like, if, if I wanted to fully change my body and shape, but I still have my brain, I can even rebuild the brain a little bit. Then it's like, hey, guess what? <sighs> I'm going to like that. That's a different type of surgery at that point. Like, oh, you know, fuck your plastic surgery bullshit. I'll just have myself look perfectly as young as I want to or whatever. Great stuff. I still have to get it to leave the body, but that's a lot easier for what it's worth, you know. You tend to like make a little bit of a you know incision sort of thing, but it's really more just separating the cells for a little bit, and I'll just drain it out, you know, and, and vaporize it and get rid of it. That'll make it easier for its worth. But then it's like ah, oh, then uh, yeah, it's not instead of needing to cauterize because like down to down to nano things, and it's like I just moved the cells like individually. I didn't cut the cells, I just moved the cells, and I still had more enough oxygen and blood in there. So I'm just gonna like combine them again <laughs> and get some of the nice little compounds necessary in that area to make sure that behold, it uh, it didn't have to do scar stuff. Isn't that nice? You know, so that's that's good stuff. But, uh, ah, this has already gone on for too long. See ya, bye. Suck my dick and balls, like and subscribe. Eh, you know, all that stuff.